about this uh, EMP. This is actually a Faraday cage. This thing started out, this box, as a um, military night vision device box. It's similar to a 50 uh, caliber ammo can in its actual dimensions. So, and I also have done that with the other, uh, with the power supply box, what I've done here. Now, all the Faraday cages that I've seen so far have been on handy to use. Uh, what I did with this one is, I cut a piece of very thin gauge aluminum so that it just fits inside the box here over top of the gasket. <coughs> I put foam in here so that the radio, when it's inside the box, is completely insulated from the box. And then when it's closed, the paint, which has been taken off of the top edge right here, um, allows this edge to be a perfect contact then with this, such that when it is closed, it's perfectly EMP protected. And it's handy to use, which is something that I, I've not seen in a lot of other kinds of um, things that people have done. The um, charge controller for the power supply that have over there also has some silicon in it, of course. So I also have the, um, the lid with the same kind of setup, thin sheet, sheet aluminum, which then makes contact around the top of the box when it's closed, such that it also is, is perfectly protected from EMP. Interesting. So anyhow, that you know, that's what I want to tell you about this um, this setup that I have here and how I've decided to make it work. I tried. Actually, I was given the idea by another fellow in our club, and he had suggested perhaps using screen material in the top. But I I tried that, and it, it seemed like the screen degraded after a little bit of time, so it was kind of um, on handy. This I've been using now for the best part of a year and um, have absolutely no problem with it. So you have no problem with uh, electromagnetic... Uh... It's completely protected. This, you can see right here, there's a line which has been made by its contact with the top of the box. The gasket on the back side presses this aluminum between the gasket and the top edge right here. And there's, there's no way that any kind of um, EMP burst can, can get through there. That's absolutely ingenious. So anyhow, I, I just hope if uh, somebody sees this and they, they decide they want to try to protect the radios or whatever, um, I think this is a good way to go about it. I agree. Hey, what's your name and call sign? Uh, Mike, KB3QJA. Very good. How long have you been an amateur operator? About uh, five years now. Excellent. You're still having fun with it. Yes, absolutely. Very good. It's a good hobby. I'm over here. I actually had... A fellow, I like to operate portable with my uh, setup here, and I was at Caledonia one day uh, working some DX, and a fellow had um, was walking along uh, one of the paths there, came over to my table, wanted to shake my hand. He said uh, he was so glad to see people were still involved in this kind of uh, ham radio with uh, Morse code and so forth. He said. One of these days when the power grid goes down and nobody's talking to anybody, he says, we're going to need you fellas. So I thought that was kind of neat of him to come over and do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's your uh, your CW rig there and everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that fits down in the case, like you said, with the uh, the foam cushioning and the uh, everything you need to get up and go. Everything that I need is in these two boxes right there. Except, of course, for the pole for the antenna. Right. That's very good. That's excellent stuff. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you're giving some people some ideas here. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>